Well, hello. This is time for Chem 1 Nuclear Chemistry. And for your Chem 2 fans, you might see some new stuff on here. I might cut it out for you, but here it is, the long one. Here we go. So, we have nuclear chemistry. Is easy. I'll go back. Check out the YouTube video. It's really cool. Next, we got radioactivity. Easy as alpha, beta, gamma. The Greek letters ABG or ABC. Hmm. So, Talk about nuclear energy, Hiroshima bomb was dropped in World War II in 1945 on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So that's nuclear energy, not in a good way. And we'll learn about that later. Next. And of course, here's nuclear energy in a better way. We have nuclear energy. Here we have Oyster Creek, the site of the first nuclear power plant in the state of New Jersey, built in 1967, just recently decommissioned. And of course, we have the sun. So those are two types of nuclear energy. And what's nuclear chemistry? The study of atomic nucleus and changes that they have. So let's take a look at what those changes are. So different kinds of radiation. There are particles that travel through space. It's everywhere in the universe. There's natural, it's cosmic radiation, terrestrial from the ground, internal radiation from inside of us when we eat the radioactive bananas. Ooh. And of course, there's man-made radiation from TV, x-rays, smoke, de smoke detectors, yes, nuclear medicine, and of course, uh, Homer Simpson on the, the power plant. Okay, so talking about dangerous radiation, where do we get our dangerous radiation from that causes cancer? Oh my goodness, guess what? Most of it comes from radon. Only a small amount of it comes from x-rays and a very small comes from nuclear medicine. A tiny bit comes from nuclear products. 8% comes from outer space. 8% comes from the ground, not radon, just around. And then internal from us is 11%. So very interesting. Most of our radiation exposure comes from radon. So that's very important. Where is radon? Ooh, look at the state of New Jersey. And here we are in beautiful Edison, New Jersey. And you can tell because there's Highland Park smack dab in the middle. And we're in the yellow zone, which is moderate radon potential. Notice we're very close to the red zone. So over here, we are in high area for radon. And if you look at the United States map, look at that. There it is. It's very interesting how it's done to get put together like that. That's geology. Long story. So... What's happening in radon? Radon is coming from the ground. It's a radioactive decay product, which we'll learn later, that's coming as a gas out of the in the ground, and it seeps up through the ground and seeps up in cracks in your basement. And once it gets into your basement, it stays there because it's a very dense gas. So it stays in your basement, which is not good. So if you have radon in your house, the way to get rid of it is to put in a way to get the ventilate and get the air in and the radon out so every house in the sale of new jersey state of new jersey when you sell it has to have a radon test very important okay so why are things radioactive excellent question the answer is what holds the nucleus together something called the strong force it's a great name because it's really strong it's the strongest force in the universe and it's holding these protons which are pluses next to each other. And it's really hard to hold two magnets that are opposing the opposites together. So it's gotta be really, really strong. So it holds it together. But if the nucleus is unstable, it's radioactive and it wants to break up and it wants to become stable. So here is a nice little chart. I love charts. And here, let's read the chart. Stable isotopes are black. Here's the stable isotopes going up there. Nice little line. Then we have isotopes that are radioactive, but very slightly radioactive. They can last 46 billion years. Notice there's a few of them up there. No black ones up there. That's very interesting. We'll talk about that in a second. We got the yellow ones. There's some of them in there. And then we got the green ones, which are sh very radioactive. They last a second to 12 days. Lots of those little buggers. And then there's the ones that are like less than a second. And those are very radioactive, so you got to watch out for those little buggers. And then you might say, Mr. G, what, what's going on up here, and why are these guys predicted to exist? Well, this is an actually an outdated slide 
because we have found, and if you look at the periodic table, the old periodic tables, these guys are blank. There they are. But the new periodic tables, they're all filled in because they found those elements. And we'll learn how, to, how, they, how they make them and how they found them. So they filled up these guys with stable, pretty stable, 40, you know, many, many years. You can have the half-life. So they're, react, they're, they're not that radioactive and they're stable. And it's predicted just like there's a little lump here where it's not stable and then it's stable here. They predict in the future time that they're going to have new elements that are going to be stable. Haven't made them yet. It's a prediction. We'll see. So three types of radioactive decay. Alpha, beta, gamma. Alpha man, beta boy, and gamma girl. What is alpha decay? Alpha decay is when you have a radioactive nuclear and it releases something. What does it release? It releases an alpha particle. What is an alpha particle? An alpha particle is a helium nucleus, which is made up of two protons and two neutrons. And it's usually written down here as a helium. Two protons, and I'll get this out of the way, two protons and two neutrons. Yeah, get that out of the way too. Thanks. Ah, it's stuck. So out comes helium. Hmm, maybe that's where helium comes from in uh, for balloons. Yes, it does. We'll get to that, too. And, of course, if you remember from our previous experiment, our previous section about Rutherford's gold foil experiment, he used alpha particles, and that's what he had. He had a radioactive thing, gave out the alpha particles, and it went through the gold foil because it's so small. It's the nucleus of a helium. Oh, go back. Okay, so... Here's the helium nucleus. Sometimes you see it written with a little alpha particle, but usually you'll see it like this. Here is an equation. So the equation is, let's look. Here we have radium and radium. Look at these numbers. 222 goes to an alpha particle and radon. And this is radon gas. So now look at this. Radium, it's a, a metal, is breaking up. Oh, go back is breaking up into two gases. Now, of course, this gas is helium. It's an alpha particle. So it's coming out and then it's grabbing electrons from other guys, which is not good because radiation is not good for you. So it's grabbing the electrons to make helium gas. And that comes in the ground, comes out of the ground. And then the radon also comes out of the ground. So there's that there's that radon sneaking into your basement. But let's figure out how we balance the equations. So we balance the equations by, let's look at this. 222 two, two, atomic mass equals 4 plus 218. Easy, yes. And on the bottom, 88 equals 2 plus 86. So notice the bottom numbers add up and the top numbers add up. There you go. Amazing. Okay. Then we have the beta decay. Beta decay is a little different. It's very interesting. Let's see if I can see it. There you go. Can't really see it too well. A uh, beta decay is when a neutron in the nucleus breaks apart into a proton, which stays in the nucleus, because that's where protons belong, and the electron, which doesn't want to be there, whoosh, comes flying out and doesn't go in the orbit. It comes flying out really high speed and it's radioactive, so it whoosh, comes flying out, and got to watch out for those beta particles, okay? so But it's an electron flying out, so as the electron flies out, the neutron changes into a proton. So now the atomic number is changing. What? We'll take a look at that. Oh, and I like this cute little thing. You got a beta decay, and look at that. They break up into neutrons and bosons and all those other fun things. So here we go. And neutrinos, look at that. So here we have carbon-14 for carbon dating, which we'll learn about later. Carbon-14 breaks up into nitrogen-14. So let's do the math. 14 equals 14 plus zero. Six equals seven minus one. So that's how we do the math. And I got other videos on the math of how to do that. So this is beta decay. 
the element is changing. Very interesting. Then, of course, we have gamma radiation, which is the third kind, where oh, the Hulk is a gamma radiation. So, yes, gamma radiation, well, officially didn't really make the Hulk. I mean, cartoons, okay, fine. But it's nasty radiation. You don't want it, except in small doses, which you can for here in a PET scan, which is a positron emission tomography which is kind of like a cat scan or an mri it sees inside your body and it sees by putting in these radioactive elements and they break up and they give off the gamma radiation and give off these positrons and they detect the gammas and the positrons so notice what happens it gives off just energy and we'll see that in the next slide look at the gamma ray zero zero no mass, no protons, nothing, just energy, no mass. Notice the numbers. 240 equals 240 plus zero. Easy. 94 equals 94 plus zero. Easy. It's easy to spot gamma radiation equation because it's the same element on both sides. It doesn't change. Isn't that great? So here we have the three types of radiation, which is called transmutation. What's transmutation? Voc vocab word, excuse me. Vocab word, transmutation. That's when an element changes into another element. Now, wait a minute. Didn't the alchemists, so let's see, we got, we got Rutherford and his alpha particles, and now we got the alchemists trying to make gold, and they couldn't do it. So, wait a minute, Mr. G, you're telling me that I can make elements from different elements? Yes. Is it easy? No. Can I make gold out of different elements? Yes. Is it worth it? No. Why? Because you make radioactive gold and you can't really sell radioactive gold, number one. And number two, it's real expensive. It's easy to just go dig it out of the ground. So, let's take a look. Radon goes to helium and radium goes to helium and radon. Elements changing. Carbon going to nitrogen and giving off a beta particle. The helium atom is an alpha particle. That's the definition. And, of course, the gamma radiation, which you can't really see hiding on the bottom, is zero, zero. So gamma dot really doesn't do anything exciting. There you go. But it's very dangerous, so watch out for the, the gammas. Okay, so let's talk about, let's see, go back. Eh. So notice that the numbers at the top and the numbers at the bottom stay the same. So you're not losing atomic numbers, protons or neutrons, the total. I mean, yes, here, the pro neutrons are changing into protons, electrons, but the mass is the same. Tiny bit is changed, tiny bit is lost. We'll talk about that later. Okay, so let's talk about penetrating Oh, boy. Here's lots of words. So here's lots of words. Words, words, words. Blah, 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 blah. You can read all the words. Blah, 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 blah. So alpha particles hit paper. Stop. Beta particles are electrons. They can go through paper, but wood will stop it or plastic will stop it. And then, of course, gamma particles are really nasty. You need either lead or heavy concrete. So because they're nasty to go through. So let's take a look at an easier slide with less words. I like the slides with less words. So much nicer. So here we have an alpha particle. It's paper. Boom. Stops. So our shirts and our clothes can protect us from alpha particle radiation, which is very nice. Beta radiation will go through your clothes. But plastic will protect you. So the book, Radioactive, will protect me from my beta radiation if it's coming towards me. I'll bat it away with the book. Psh, 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 psh. But what about those gammas? No, gammas are gonna go through you, just like x-rays go through you, and they go through your bones, and they go through, that's why they put lead on you when you get x-rays to protect you from those x-rays because that radiation's not that good for you. So you don't want to get cancer, so you, you wear that lead apron. Or for a bomb shelter, for nuclear explosions, lots of concrete. And you'll see 
in the nuclear reactors, it has lots of concrete to protect us. As long as it doesn't go boom. How can you tell there's radiation? You use a Geiger counter. A Geiger counter detects radiation. So this is an old school Geiger counter. This is a newer Geiger counter. They have even newer, newer, newer ones. And what it does, it detects radiation because you can't feel it. You can't feel the x-rays. It goes right through you. So you need a way to detect it, and that's a Geiger counter. Now, of course, you could also use a film badge. So say, for example, if you're an x-ray technician, you don't carry your way and carry a Geiger counter around. You want to know how much x-rays you're getting. So you wear this little badge to see how much x-rays you're getting. And there's a thing called a scintillation counter. Don't worry about that. And then this is really cool. This is uranium glass. And it's glass that's made with uranium, which is radioactive. And interestingly enough, it glows under UV light. So that's a good way to spot it. Okay, and here comes the half-lives, and I will save that for another time.